that away. Now, see if you come on this side, you can get a little bit more leverage. There you go. First you get it on there, get it started, and then come around, come clear around. Now you can pull back on it with two hands. See, pull, 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 there you go. Now you go back and forth. Repeat after me. Righty tighty. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Well, you know that already. Who taught you that? Myself. Huh? Myself. You you thought you taught yourself that little saying? Mm -hmm. Oh. You ever heard your brother say that? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Maybe that's where you picked it up, huh? No kids at school. Kids at school. Oh, that's good. So what we're going to do is take that cover loose and then we're going to take some gaskets off of there and see if we can get that to have the right kind of play in it. Are you having fun yet? No. No? Is this like work? Yes. This is not as bad as cleaning your room though, is it? I don't have a room. Oh. You so sleep under the porch? Okay. No. I, I think you're done. Yeah. I think it's off. Okay, so let the nut come off. The nut's stuck in there. There you go. Okay, now when they get loose, you can take them off the rest of the way with your fingers. Yeah? See? Then they got washers underneath. Here's one over here. Let me give you a hand. It's kind of... Here, you hold the camera and, and video. Don't put your finger in front. But look at the... Watch my hands. Okay? So we're going to pick this axle up. And we're going to... We don't want to pull the axle out. But we want to get this cover off. So that we can get all but one of these and hopefully that's going to give us the right clearance we did a test just then to see how much clearance we have we don't want to tear the gasket because that's got to hold the oil inside the transmission today we're trying to uh, do the final assembly on our close ratio transmission and this is going to be a tough video to make. Uh, my grandson was just here for a visit and uh, I need to get a little bit of him in there for uh, his satisfaction. And I know some of you don't like these long technical videos. Uh, it's hard to please everybody. Make it entertaining, make it informative, and get the job done. Okay. These have to fit against the side plate like, like so. You don't have a CV joint with a swing axle. This is how you get your up and down wheel action. It's more of an arc. Now, some people think that uh, they can go a greater distance than what the factory allowed, and probably to a certain degree there is, but you're not going to get the same amount of travel you do with a CV joint, and these aren't indestructible. They only last, you know, you can bend them up. This is the one I was trying to make fit and it didn't, I, every time I did I had this play up and down like this and a friend of mine, I, had, I talked to him about it and he says, ah, I don't think a little play is going to make that much difference when you put your bearing on the end and your brake drum and stuff, it'll all tighten up. Well that's bullshit and I know it's not right and I kept trying it on different things and I came to the conclusion that now you can see on this one right here this is this one is in the same situation it's got play it's because the daisy isn't on here you've got these plastic uh, we call them daisies it's a spacer that goes on there let me see if I can get this seated completely. This is important. Now, sometimes you buy the uh, new ones aftermarket and they're clear. They're not. This is an old. If you take a transmission apart and save these, that's why I take broken transmissions so I can get these oddball parts. Now, this this guy had this one together and it even tore up these. Now you want it to fit down in there real good. 
and then that keeps your metal to metal contact on there along with lubricant and then this sits on there and see there's no play I can't move it up and down now I'll take this one off and I'll put this one which appeared to be good and I fought with for a long period of time put this down and I've got play up and down and the reason is this is slightly deformed around here because this was out on a sand rail one time and it overextended and it bent this if I had a die or a way to beat this thing back into position I would but I didn't so I had to go through a lot of work to get this one back on now let's take a look at the CD joint per se or how these things pivot I know the camera is a little far away but I'm gonna try to explain this this is the side gear that goes into the planetary gears in the center of your differential this is what this is what the end of the axle fits in this as this rotates it can move up and down this way it can move around this way it 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 wobbles in there basically you, know, you kids that are out there making these low riders and getting your axles and your tires are cocked inside you are working the hell out of these things and you're putting a lot of pressure on the snap ring these things are going to last the longest and run the smoothest when these things are are in there straight and level otherwise this thing is just constantly rattling around in there now it's not loose the way they take up the slack is with these fulcrum plates these go inside the side gear now they get chewed up when you have them all cockeyed you start getting them hot and pieces of metal break loose and they'll actually get scratched if you don't take care of your boots and you have a hole in there crud can get inside there and these got gouged up the sides of these axles you can see this one looks pretty good let me see if I can find a bad one a worse one this one I took down out of the attic I didn't try to clean it up but they'll get gouges in there and they'll tear up these plates the only thing I can think of you can't just go buy these fulcrum plates trunnion bearings trunnion plates but what I did was stone them down on a knife sharpening stone just to get the high spots off okay now you put lubrication on them and you set them inside here and the way I have found it's it's very difficult <laughs> it's very difficult to get this stuff together I don't know if I can just wing it here on camera but I'm gonna try and you try doing this when it's in the transmission and you will it will test your patience I'm telling you because you can't get your other hand in the back like this now this one is not even gonna go yep there it goes it finally went in there okay I don't know if you can see this in there so now you've got that fulcrum plate in there and you can go side to side and up and down but it can only go so far and it works a lot smoother when you got that 90 weight transmission fluid when I assemble my transmissions I usually use uh, pure synthetic heavyweight uh, and I put it all over everything I just lather it up I use this uh, Lucas pure synthetic oil stabilizer it's so slippery it's unbelievable and I'll, I'll put that all over everything now it's inside there uh, then you've got a, a plate a small plate that goes over it and then you've got a snap ring that you've got to get in there and that snap ring <laughs> will test your patience as well let's see if I've got one handy now you want to keep these as match sets you want to keep these as match sets when you take out a transmission you want to keep all of this stuff together so you don't want to mix and match this stuff because it's worn in to fit any play any slop that's in there is going to be magnified if you take it off-road and it's going to tear things up it won't last as long 
here's something that uh, if you see these fulcrum plates that have the grooves on them, these are for, uh, oversized. Now, they want you to take a feeler gauge and stick it down between there, and it should be between four and nine thousandths of an inch clearance. But what are you going to do? You got a 50 year old or older transmission, you can't just go over to the parts bin and grab that stuff. So you just reuse whatever it is you got. You put it in the back of your mind and when you're driving down the road and you hear noises and things are getting hot and not working right, these are the things that uh, you can figure out what the problem is. And what are you going to do about it? Nothing. A lot of times just letting it cool off. Metal expands when it gets hot. All those clearances change. This is cold. This is room temperature. As you get it under operation, that thing's probably going to be running 180 to 200 plus degrees. And uh, the sizes are going to change. Well, I lost my place. I don't know where I was at. I've got uh, the bulk of it back sitting in the car. It has been a real challenge to get the right axle tubes. Uh, when you're dealing with 50 year old parts there's just uh, so many things that can go wrong these metal flanges this one looks fine doesn't it but it's not uh, that part of the flange is good but this is bent and I don't really have a tool that would be cool if somebody made a took a piece of pipe or round stock had made something that could reshape that and, and get a good flat surface. I can't do this stuff without the book. Uh, I ran into something today. Oh, nope. This is your what your seal rides on. That was all screwed up on the other one. Oh, where is it? The part that goes into the axle. Oh, here's something else. Um, this is a bearing that was on the car on the driver's side and you have to examine every single little piece so a piece of metal was floating around inside that bearing see it right there see how that's open that was bearing that again it was on that driver's side that that car took just an incredible hit on that driver's side uh, now this is the piece and they make a heavy duty one. This goes on next and then your bearing would go on and this is tapered. Now I found out there's a different diameter in these. Uh, some of them are larger. This is a short axle. I don't know if you can look at see the difference. And this is a uh, this is what they call a long axle and you can see the difference in the length of the splines there so tomorrow I'm getting into that but I thought maybe I'd post up a video of what I had done so far <sighs> I think I better put this back where I got it so I don't forget overnight you have to do that when you're an old I don't have Alzheimer's I have some timers <laughs> I can remember stuff sometimes. <laughs> so, oh, what, what what else was it? The uh, the clutch arm spring was broken. Uh, evidently, the hydraulic slave cylinder has a spring, and that was enough to make it feel the way it would. I've already found another replacement spring for that. Um, I didn't want to use those axle tubes or housings. That's what that bearing came out of. I'm keeping it separate. I'm building. This is a whole entire transmission. And I'm even considering looking for some different backing plates. I want a complete replacement transmission. So if I were to break this thing on Saturday, I could have another transmission by the end of the day Sunday. That's what I want. I want spare stuff. I want... That's what I want. 
So, you know, it just takes... I have the parts. So, why not start eliminating this pile of crap, get rid of the stuff that's not useful, and put it to use. This way I could even put it in... Uh, I could transform the tub buggy, which has an IRS sedan tranny, and I could put this swing axle in there. It's a drop-in deal. It, it's coming along. It's slow. Uh, I enjoyed having my grandson up. Uh, we had a little talk. We looked at all this stuff. I don't know what kind of impression it made on him, if anything at all. Um, I think it overwhelms and scares some people. <sighs> it should overwhelm and scare me. <laughs> but it's uh, just part of the game. Uh, the nice thing about it, all the cleaning will be done. I'll go around the block and I will know in one ride around the block whether it's going to work or not. And having all the tools out and having everything clean will make disassembly much smoother, faster um, than having to deal with some of this other mystery stuff here. Uh, once I get this transmission in, then I will move into getting inside this one and seeing exactly what the damage is on that third gear. Uh, hopefully it's just a hardened key that I need and hopefully the main shaft isn't screwed up where the keyway is. Kind of an update video. I don't know how to make these type of videos short. There's some people that will watch anything, then there's other people that want to learn, and then there's other people that want more entertainment, they want something more fast paced, uh, riding around out on the dunes, and hopefully uh, there'll be some fall left, it's pretty cold now, but hopefully we'll have some nice days, we can get up in the mountains, maybe with the Baja or with this car, and see some leaves changing and have some fun that way. Thanks for watching, thanks for subbing, easy jeezy, out!